Hey everyone, this is Eric with Verse Design, and today I'm bringing you a renovation of a build by The Sim Supply. Um, yeah, so this is one of the more recent builds by The Sim Supply, and I liked it a lot. I thought it, uh, it really used the terrain well, and uh, I wanted to like renovate it. <laughs> it had a cool boxy shape, but it wasn't very modern. It was very much so like an island style build, and I wanted to take it and really make it like my own style, like kind of like a renovation should be. So yeah, this is going to be the <laughs> renovation. I have been a little bit absent on YouTube, and I guess I should like preface this video with a little bit of an update. Um, yeah, it's just been kind of a busy time in my life recently with uh, the end of the school year and stuff like that. Just my classes were a little bit intense towards the end of the year, and I just moved also. So a combination of a bunch of different things nothing like bad nothing negative just uh just been busy so i haven't been recording for youtube unfortunately but now i am like back i'm still taking classes over the summer but i am a lot less like busy a lot less occupied so i'll have much more time now to start making more videos which is good because i just got in the swing of making my videos and had to take uh, i think probably over a month break which I hate. I was really like in the swing of it. But yeah, so here is a renovation of one of James's builds, James from The Sim Supply. Um, yeah, <laughs> so with this build, I wanted to make something really super modern. And a lot of my houses are white. This one's no exception. Um, it's white, but also this wood texture. It was originally by The Sim Supply, like I said, but a lot of this is inspired by a build that I saw on Deligrucy's channel. She had a really sweet, um, I think it was her dream house, I want to say. It used a very similar wood texture on the exterior and just had a really cool modern like dark wood vibe. And it kind of inspired me to do this renovation. Um, I had actually tried building on this lot a couple of times, uh, but got discouraged and never finished it. I actually started this build or a build rather on this lot for um what was it uh dutch sims 3 masters uh his he had like a contest and i started building on this lot and 20 by 20 is just very challenging but this used the terrain really well especially with the sunken driveway so that's one thing i definitely wanted to keep when i was doing the renovation and we definitely did um yeah so the house w was made a lot smaller by me like adding and subtracting space and just changing the original design a little bit so it is smaller probably about 25 30 percent smaller than the build originally but i squeezed everything in there i needed it is a very small house for a hundred thousand simoleons actually like 110 so maybe not a super realistic house to use for your sims if you're not using cheats but you know it is what it is <laughs> And yeah, so on the exterior right now, I really wanted to incorporate that lime green with the dark wood, but it's a color I've used in a couple of builds, and I just decided against it. I think the white and the dark wood looks plenty fine, so that's what we ended up keeping. And the house ended up being uh, one bedroom, one bathroom, with the bathroom being upstairs. Uh, and I don't love that. I really wanted two bathrooms at least or if it's going to have one bedroom or rather one bathroom and i would rather not have it be an ensuite but it's kind of a bachelor style house so i just went with it um whatever <laughs> it's not that big of a deal and as you can see this house really extends like out as far as you can in any direction it is like on the borders of every side it's i tried as hard as i could to use the space well and to just make a house that felt larger than it should on a 20 by 20 lot but i don't think it was very successful in that regard <laughs> um it just is what it is it's 20 by 20 it is not going to be a huge house um yeah and one thing that i wanted to incorporate into this build uh, was like an uneven roof have it be at like multiple levels i think that adds like a really cool character to the house and the white part right here that's technically green right now <laughs> but it gets recolored to match the house um that part ends up being diagonal and that's something i really like to do in houses is uh make diagonal roofs and not use the roofing tool just because i feel like it's kind of limiting in the style that you can do a house that uses the roofing tool 
Um, even if it's not a suburban style house, it still tends to look fairly suburban, fairly pedestrian, just because the style's limiting. I mean, they don't have very modern textures or anything like that. So I just ended up using the, uh, uh, CFE. I couldn't remember the name of it. I ended up using constrained floor elevation to do that part of the house. And one thing that I've learned just from like being in school, being like a uh, design student, like learning about uh, design and stuff like that, you really want to echo different shapes. Excuse me. You want to echo different shapes. So on the right, you see that that part that we just did CFE on slants from right to left. And one thing that I wanted to do on this part right here, which as you can see is not the easiest to do on a small lot, but I wanted to make the brown part uh, diagonal the other way. So it really emphasizes like the roof lines and they meet at a certain point too, which is just awesome. I really love how the roof turned out on this house. It ends up being like the primary like defining feature. So yeah, I end up liking it. Also, I extended this front porch a little bit just to have a little bit of, like, to use the space out there. I didn't even put anything out there, but just to have something there instead of just grass or yard or whatever. And that kind of rounds out the basic shape for the house. Um, I do think we come in and change the back just slightly, but this is the overall shape that we went with. And as you can tell, it's really super different from the original design. Not that the original design was bad at all. Actually, it was very good. That's why I wanted to like take it and make it my own. But uh, like I said, I just wanted to make something very different from the original design and just really make it my own. And I think it was successful. And yeah, we in a moment here, we like finish with the exterior. I think we should <laughs> we should have been done already. It's taking forever, but. Yeah, we move on the inside, and the inside takes longer than it should as well. This was just a fairly challenging lot to build in, and because it was challenging, the exterior like kind of took focus. I really wanted it to look good, and I didn't like adjust. I didn't even think about the interior when I was doing the exterior. So, I don't know. <laughs> the interior kind of was the, I don't know. <laughs> just not that important when I was making it. So we got a weird shape interior, but that's not always a bad thing because sometimes if you're like building a house and you think, oh, well, if I put walls here and here and make the exterior look this way, then it like changes the interior in a negative way. So maybe I won't. I find myself doing that pretty frequently and you sacrifice what the house looks like for internal space. And that's not really a good thing because even if an interior shape is strange, like this whole house has a strange shape on the inside, it makes it interesting. Everything's not like a normal square little box that you build in. It turns out like unique and to have a little bit of character. So I didn't so much mind the shape of the interior. It was hard to, it was hard to work with, but it, I think it ended up looking pretty great. And yeah, that's the overall shape of the upstairs. If you can see that ends up being a, uh, studio like a music studio i don't know <laughs> i think it just has a drum set and a guitar in it and a bedroom and a bathroom with a water closet so it it ended up like a fairly usable space just difficult to work with and here we're thinking about maybe like adjusting that half of the roof and making it a little more interesting but i don't think it's really necessary so we don't <laughs> we just don't do it and yeah, I don't think on my YouTube channel I have ever used any windows that are not into the future. <laughs> and I don't love that, but to be honest with you, I don't love a lot of the windows in this game. So, <laughs> one thing that I'm really trying to do in the series, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, it's the SoCal Family House. I actually haven't uploaded that to YouTube yet, but that is going to be like kind of my branching out project. I'm going to be using more suburban style elements. I'm going to be using the roof tool a lot and I don't know, just things that make it look less modern. It's still going to be a modern house, but it's going to be like suburban style, which is very much so a departure from what I usually do on YouTube. So anyway, <laughs> this video is not about that video, but <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, those spaces right there, 
I did not want to turn into outdoor areas just because they're small and awkward and I don't think they really fit as balconies. So I ended up making them outdoor like patio gardens and I think they look pretty cool. I could have put more time and effort into the patios and done some like nice flowers and even some rock work, some minimal rock work out there, but I just didn't. I don't know. I didn't think it was that important to the build. So anyway, <laughs> that went right here. We were just like blacking out some areas and making it look a little bit better. And yeah, so if you don't know, that is a stock texture that I just used for the grass. It is a texture on the carpet, actually. It's a carpeting. And I saw that in some YouTube video, I can't remember, but it has a texture to it that looks like AstroTurf. So it doesn't even look like carpet to me. I don't know why it's in the carpeting, but if you want to use that, it's just, I think it's like the, it's in the first or second row of the carpeting when you open up the tile or the flooring. So. I don't know, just a heads up, I think it works fairly well if you want to use it on the exterior. I know that they have the Into the Future, um, like AstroTurf style flooring, and without cheats, you can place plants on it, which is nice, but I don't know, I use cheats anyway, so it's not that big of a deal for me, and it doesn't have a very realistic texture to it, the Into the Future ones, in my opinion, so I tend to use other things. And yeah, so that's uh, the Prius, obviously, and that's one of the pieces of custom content that I use. There are very few pieces of custom content that I use in this build, but that's one of them. And it's free. It's on the, the Sims 3 exchange. You can download it if you'd like. I think it's cool. It's one of the more realistic looking cars that you can use in this game, and it's very customizable. So <laughs> heads up if you don't have that one. Most people probably do, but if you don't. And yeah, those are the by the bug like invisible lights. I know they look stupid right now, but you probably know this already, but you can use those um, to add like lighting and when you play in the game, they disappear. So it helps for like lighting the exterior of your house, places that you can't fit traditional lights from the game. Uh, like on the very top of the house and stuff just to give it it doesn't really look that realistic but you can see the house a little bit better at night which I think is kind of important in this game anyway uh, moving on the interior finally that is the kitchen and it ends up fairly large for the size of the house I guess there's enough counter space and I fit every power appliance in so it ends up a uh, fairly big. I just don't know if I love it. It's a strange space. It's got full windows on one side, which is nice for light, but it really kind of negates where you can put those counters because, I mean, I do it too. A lot of people do it. Um, they put the counters right up against full pane windows and it's not realistic and it looks weird, but I mean, sometimes you're just, I don't know, Sometimes you don't have that many options <laughs> when you're doing the interior, and I didn't want to put them against the window, so it's basically against that back wall where the stoves are and where the refrigerator is, and the wall to the left. So, I don't know. It is what it is. <laughs> I like it anyway. And, oh, <laughs> here is where I left that recording when I used the restroom. Sorry. <laughs> here we are right back. Um, yeah, like I said, everything fit pretty well in here. Um, two stoves is nice. It's obviously like not that big of a deal for the game. You don't really need two stoves in the game, but in a lot of high-end kitchens, that's something you will have is a double stove. I think double stoves look really, really awesome when they are like above each other, when they're like built in in a custom kitchen. But that's one thing I really feel like this game is lacking. Everything looks very like... I don't want us to use the word suburban again because it's not even appropriate, I don't think. But just, they look so like normal. All of the counters look normal. Even the Into the Future ones, they're my favorite cabinets in the game. And they just look like you bought them from Ikea. So, I don't know. You can't really build super customized rooms in this game. Especially kitchens. They have a very limited amount of things. So, that's something I'm hoping for in The Sims to... Maybe like full like floor to ceiling cabinets that open both vertically and horizontally, just like options for you to use in your kitchens. Because, like I said, options are fairly limited in The Sims 3. 
Anyway, yeah, that happened since I've been <laughs> taking my break. A lot more information about The Sims 4, which I'm excited about. Um, yeah, so we got a release date, September 2nd, which is awesome. And we've seen a little bit more about The Sims 4, and I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of people are very burned out on The Sims 3, and they are just <laughs> so ready for The Sims 4 to come out. But I haven't been playing The Sims 3 as long as most people. I really, like, seriously started playing The Sims 3 within the last year. And, I mean, I had The Sims 3 when I was, like, I don't know, like, probably, like, three or four years ago I got it originally. But I wasn't that seriously, and I just played occasionally. Definitely didn't have a YouTube channel or anything like that. So I'm really just getting into, like, coming into my own on YouTube and, like, starting to build houses and stuff. So I'm cool with The Sims 3 right now. I am not bugging for The Sims 4, though I know a lot of people are. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> back to the build. We are, I think, yeah, this is where we were trying to put in a dining room. It just wasn't necessary, I don't think. Um, there's a big open space right there with nothing, and I felt like it was wasted, especially for how small the house is, but, I don't know, we end up just keeping it the way it is. We don't put a dining room in, we actually, uh, negate that, just because this is a house where two sims would live, like, tops, like a couple maybe, and there's two seating spots right by the island, so, I don't know, I didn't really see it necessary to put in a dining room. Excuse me. And so yeah, so moving forward here, we are really just trying to do a simplistic, sort of monochromatic, not super masculine necessarily, I mean I guess it turns out kind of masculine, but that wasn't the goal necessarily, I was just going for understated, really simple, um, but well designed. I think you can pull off simplicity in a good way, but sometimes it just looks like under-decorated, especially in a video game like this. In a house, maybe, you have a little bit more leeway, but <laughs> it just ends up looking like there's not enough stuff in the room. So I, I don't know, <laughs> that's what I tried. I tried to make it look a little bit more simplistic and understated. And yeah, so moving up to the like upstairs here, you see what I was talking about just behind that wall uh, it's not a full room I guess it's just like a little bit sectioned off from the rest of the upstairs that ends up being the music studio and like I said there's a drum set and a guitar that we end up putting in that room and that's basically it um I haven't made a sim yet for this maybe I will maybe I'll upload or create a sim for this one but it's just a renovation I didn't really see it necessary to make a sim to live here Anyway, this is the upstairs, and I end up using that, like, uh, reclaimed wood-looking bed and a couple more, like, modern pieces, more, like, simple pieces, like that dresser from the base game. And, yeah, okay, so that texture, too, right there on the comforter, that's also custom content. But I do believe those are the only two pieces of custom content I used in this house. And that texture, obviously, you can, I mean, replace that however you'd like. I just thought that texture looked really cool on that comforter. And, yeah, so that's kind of how this upstairs turns out. Uh, it's very much so open, like, loft style. Not necessarily a loft. I mean, I guess you could call it a loft if you wanted, but that wasn't the <laughs> intent necessarily. So it just turns out very open, very much so bachelor style with the one bathroom and having it being basically connected to the bedroom. So yeah, if you don't like that, I mean, there's plenty of room to change it. I'm sure you can fit a bathroom downstairs, but just for design's sake, I thought that the one bathroom up here was fine. and. You saw, like, earlier in the video, I was trying to section off a bathroom to go downstairs, but, I don't know, I just couldn't find a place that I really liked, so we didn't. And this ends up being the one bathroom. This, honestly, the bathroom is probably my favorite part of the interior. It ends up looking super cool, super modern. One thing that um, is common in homes, I think I actually heard, maybe it was Deligracy who said it in one of her videos, correct me if I'm wrong, and sorry if I am, but I think one video that she made said that this is uncommon in Australia, to have like your shower in one room, and to have like the toilet and the other stuff in the other room, but that is fairly common in the US, I mean, uh, my boyfriend's house is like that, other houses are like that. They have like a toilet in one room, so you can one person can use one area and another can use 
the other. This isn't so much designed that way to be used at the same time, but I just think it's interesting. And yeah, like there are double doors that lead into the shower room, which is all tile. And dang, one thing I forgot, I meant to put um, uh, curtains across, not curtains necessarily, but blinds or something to close off that window in the shower room. And I forgot, whatever, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. Um, so that's basically the finished upstairs. We come in and yeah, I had a plant back there and it has a really cool chevron shape to the plant. And again, we use kind of the same design principle and we add the chevron wallpaper. So it's just echoing the same shape and it's kind of pleasing to the eye. I don't know, <laughs> just some small things. And there was like a little pedestal area right here that I thought was super cool and I wanted to use it as such. I wanted it to be like an area where you can place stuff up top and so I put the light over the piece of art that's up there and it looks super cool in my opinion <laughs> you can be the judge but I think it looks cool and yeah so here's the drum set that we end up putting in there and also just a guitar just a couple things that you can put in there obviously it works as an office that's connected up there you can put gym equipment I mean it's a really flexible space it's just a three by three small area up there um, I even actually thought about making a second bathroom right there, but you know, no, not that big of a deal. <laughs> and I add this tapestry, add some cool textures to it, a couple different patterns and colors, and make it look cool. Add some carpeting, and that kind of does it. That rounds out the like skills room. And momentarily here, just in a few seconds, we end up moving to the screenshots, but we do this outdoor area first. This is. Um, I have the outdoor living stuff and I think it's really a shame not to use that stuff pack, especially on like a large outdoor area like this. I mean there's the outdoor cooking, there's the barbecue right there, there's the breeze which is just the small refrigerator, and there's also a cooktop right there with the four burners and the griddle. So I don't know, I just thought it, I, it would be like really high end to place like a full kitchen outside. That's something you see in really high-end homes. So that's what we did. And I do kind of a similar design out here that I did in the other kitchen. Just actually this kitchen outdoor is bigger than the indoors kitchen, but whatever. I end up just placing a few of the islands and a few bar stools outside as well. And it turns into like a full outdoor cooking area, a little entertain entertaining area also with the seating. And that rounds out the build. That's it. And we are moving into screenshots. Here's the front of the house. It's totally complete. And I don't know. I love the design. I think it looks great. Here's the back of the house. And you can see right there the full kitchen and everything. Here's the bedroom. Just a quick shot. Anyway, that's basically it. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Again, sorry about the delay before this build. And I will be on a much more regular recording schedule moving forward. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. I'll have a new video up in probably like a day or two for you guys. All right, take it easy.